In this tutorial, we will be looking at how to implement circuits that are a little bit more complicated than just simple resistive circuits. We will be looking at setting up a similar circuit to the one that we saw in the lectures with a resistor, a capacitor and an inductor in series with one another. First of all, let's go on to product options. Because we are using reactive elements, we have to have some sort of AC signal to see their true behavior. As you know, a capacitor is an open circuit at DC and an inductor is a short circuit. So to see their impedance and how they can affect the behavior of a circuit, we need to have some sort of AC signal. Remember that the frequency of any AC excitation in microwave office is determined by what we set in the frequency tab of the product options. So first of all we'll choose the units to be megahertz and then we'll decide to work with a single point to begin with and this point will be one megahertz and then remember to click on apply. Once you've done so you will see your frequency in the current range which in this case is only one frequency at one megahertz. After that we'll go to global units and I'd like to change the capacitance to nanofarads. I just think that this is a more useful unit for capacitance. And then we'll just click on OK. As usual, we have to go to circuit schematics first, right click, create a new schematic. We'll call it Series RLC. And then either press Enter or click on Create. Now we have our blank canvas on which we can place our elements. As usual, we press Ctrl L to conjure up this window with all the elements there. As you can see, we are searching by name because the funnel is on the name heading. We could search by description by control clicking. But because I know already all the names of the elements I want, I'll find it quicker to search by name. So I'll control click on name again and I'll then type in what I want. First of all, I want a resistor, RES, and I'll just place it like so. And then I press control L again and type in CAP, CAP, and I'll put a capacitor right there and then I press Ctrl L again and type IND for an inductor and then we can just place this one there as well. We'll set the values of we'll set the value of these elements to similar values to the ones that we actually saw in the lecture. So we'll set the resistance to 50 ohms, we'll set the capacitance to 1 nanofarads and we'll leave the inductance to its default value of 1 nanoharis. Of course, at one end of our RLC series, we'll need a ground connection. Remember, you can fetch a ground by clicking up here or simply pressing Ctrl G and then placing the ground like so. Once it is connected, you can move it to wherever you prefer. I'll just move it away a little bit for the, from the inductor because we'll be placing some stuff around it soon enough. Now what I need is a generator. Remember that the uh, generators that we've used so far are ideal voltage sources. So I'll press Ctrl L and then type in ACVS which is my uh, AC voltage source. You could have searched by description if you didn't know but uh, for now we'll do it this way. And then we'll just place it on the schematic like so. And of course we also need a ground reference for our signal generator. So we press Ctrl G and place a ground right there. Now the reason why I left a gap there is because I want to be able to monitor the current that goes through this loop. Remember that we have one current since we have one single loop through which the current can flow. Also remember that it makes absolutely no difference whatsoever uh, what uh, order the elements are placed in. So I could have put the capacitor first or the inductor first, this wouldn't have mattered at all. The same current would have flown through the loop and then the same voltage and current relationship would have applied to each element individually as we will see shortly. So to monitor the current we need a current meter so we'll just press Ctrl L. Uh, we can click on description and type in current meter if we want to or we could just simply keep it to name and just type in I underscore meter and the same thing would come up. So we'll place this current meter right here and then connect it to the signal generator and to the load impedance. Let's move uh, the specifications of our SIGGEN out of the way. Another very useful feature which becomes extremely important as the circuit gets more and more complicated is that you can change the ID of any element as you see fit. You can change the ID of resistor, capacitor, inductor but in this case the one I want to change is the one for the current meter. 
So I'll call this I underscore RLC just to corroborate the concept and reiterate that there is only one current going through R, L and C. Now what I want to do is look at the voltage across each element. The current is the same, so I need just one single current meter, but what about the voltage? So again we press Ctrl L, we can search by description for voltage meters, but I know that the voltage meter is called B underscore meter, so I'll find it that way. Remember to rotate an element, simply right click. Be careful with the polarity of the voltage. If the current is flowing in this direction, across this passive element, then the voltage is in the opposite direction. So always make sure that you've got the polarity of your voltage meters the right way around. So this is what I've done here, and I'll just connect it now to my resistor terminals. And the other thing that I'll do is change the ID of this voltage meter because otherwise when I try to find my measurement to put it on a graph I won't know which one is VM1. So to make it clear I'll just call it VR and this way I'll know exactly what it is. To get another voltage meter I don't have to press Ctrl L. I can simply click on this one, press Ctrl C and then Ctrl V and then place it elsewhere. Notice that the ID has changed of course because you can't have two ID the same in the same schematic. But we'll change this ID anyway and we'll call it VC because we want it to be recognizable so we can find it easily when we go and plot graphs. So again let's connect this meter to the capacitor terminals and then again we can press Ctrl V and put another meter across the inductor terminals. We'll call it VL. So we've got our circuit all set up. We've got a voltage source here which has got a magnitude of 1 volt no DC offset, no initial phase, and it's got a frequency which is the frequency defined in the project options. If you double click on that, you, you go to the frequencies tab, then you can see that the frequency you're working at in the current range is just one frequency of one megahertz. So now we are ready to go to graphs and display current and voltages for each of these elements. So let's right click on graphs and create a new graph and we'll call it resistor. It's a rectangular graph and then we just right click, go on to add a new measurement and we have to go to the non-linear section, find the voltage and then V time as we did previously. Then what we've got to do is define the data source name, in this case there's only one schematic so it can only be one. And then we can click on the three dots and identify the element that we want to use to measure the voltage. In this case, of course, it's VR. And then click on OK. In terms of the sweep frequency, this section here, when you have only one frequency, whatever you set here does not matter at all. However, if you defined a set of frequencies, then you'd have an option of what to do with them. So you could either select each frequency individually and display the waveform at that very frequency. In this case we've only got one, so this is the only one we could select. You could plot all the traces, so it would plot on the graph, for example, the voltage in the time domain at 1 MHz, 2 MHz, 3 MHz, every frequency that you've got, which can be very messy. Or you can choose select with tuner. This is the option that we will go for. When you have select with tuner, what you can do is define a range of frequencies, then open the tune tool and change the frequency just by moving the slider up and down. And this is a very neat way to do things. Now, although it doesn't matter at this very moment which one we pick, later on we will be defining a range of frequency and we want to be able to select them all. So we choose this option, the option select with tuner, so as to enable ourselves to then define a frequency range and select the frequencies in the range quite easily. So here we just go for select with tuner and then apply. We do the same for current, so we'll find the current up here, we want the time domain current, we want to find the right current, so we click on the three dots and we select the current meter that we specified and then click on OK. Again, with the sweep frequency, we can select anything when we have one point, but we'll choose to uh, have the option to select frequencies with tuner so that 
when we have more than one, we can easily switch between all of them. And then click on Apply and OK. Now if we simulate, we get the voltage and current in a similar way as we did in the past. They are of course in phase with one another and, and of course, as we have seen in the past, they have very different amplitudes and very different units. So, first of all, let's resize the legend a little bit so it's out of the way. And we will again create a second axis. So we just right click, go on to properties and then measurements. And then we just have the voltage on the left and the current on the right. Then I click on apply and OK. And you can see that now we've got the two displayed on two different scales, on two different axes, and we can see them a bit more clearly. So, although we have a capacitor and an inductor connected to the resistor, its own voltage and current relationship stays the same. So the voltage across its terminals and the current through it still have the same relationship according to Ohm's law for impedances. Notice how the legend now has changed and it specifies that the voltage is on the left axis and the current is on the right axis. You can also see that the time is displayed in nanoseconds here. What if you wanted to change the units of that? Well, that's again set globally, so we need to go to Project Options, double click, go on to Global Units and then change the time to, for example, microseconds and then click on OK. If we re-simulate now, you'll see that the time units has now changed to microseconds. Now, we want to be able to see similar graphs for the capacitor and the inductor as well. Is there an easy way to replicate these graphs? Well, as it happens, there is. If you just click on the resistor graph and then right click on it, it gives you the option to duplicate the graph. And this will create an identical measurement for you. And then you can simply go and change the element which is used to measure the quantity specified in the graph. So let's do just that. Right click on resistor, which is the name of the graph, and then duplicate graph. A new graph has come on, which is called resistor 1, and it's identical to the previous one. First of all, let's rename it. So we right click and go on to rename graph, and we call it capacitor. Now we right click on the graph, and we go on to modify measurement. We don't need to modify the current measurement because the current is the same and it would be measured exactly in the same way and exactly with the same element. So all we need to modify is V-time. We can keep all the settings unchanged. The only thing we need to change is where the voltage is measured. So we'll just click on the three dots and then click on VC and then run OK and OK again. And you can see that now the current is ahead of the voltage by 90 degrees. But what this has allowed us to do is to save time in having to set up a new graph, set up two measurements on it, set up two different axes, and so it is a very, very worthwhile thing to know that you can duplicate a graph. There is an even quicker way to duplicate a graph. As we said, you can right click and then select duplicate graph, but also you can simply drag the graph onto the graph heading and this creates a duplicate. You can see now I've got one called capacitor 1. So we right click on that again and we change the name to inductor. Then on the inductor graph again we right click, we go to modify measurement, we don't need to change the current, all we need to change is where the voltage is measured. So let's click on the voltage V time, click on the three dots, select the relevant voltage meter and then click on OK and then OK again. Now the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees. So you can see that now we are measuring across the inductor. Lastly, what I'd like to be able to see are the voltage and current waveform or rather the voltage and current relationship between the voltage across the terminals of the voltage source and the current that comes out of it. Now we've seen that for the resistor the current and voltage were in phase. For the capacitor, they were 90 degrees out of phase and the current led. For the inductors, they were 90 degrees out of phase and the voltage led. If we go back to our schematic now, all we need to do to really see uh, the current voltage relationship for our signal source 
is to have a voltage meter across here. So if I just click on one of these voltage meters, press Ctrl C and Ctrl V, I've got a copy, then I can rotate it by right clicking and then I'll place it right there and then give it a nice little ground reference and we can call this VGen because it'll be the voltage across the terminals of the signal generator. Now we can go back to graphs and as we did before we can simply create a copy of one of these graphs and simply change one of the measurements. So I'll just click on the capacitor graph, drag it onto the heading there, you can see a plus sign appears, release and I've got a copy. I'll rename it generator. Of course if you find this drag and drop thing a little bit too fiddly, simply right click and go for duplicate graph, whichever way, it's completely equivalent. Now we right click on this graph, we need to modify the measurement of course, not the current because it's the same but the voltage, so where are we going to measure that? We'll measure it right here at VGen and then click on OK and then OK again. Now simulate, you can see that at the moment it looks like the current is leading the voltage and this is probably because at the frequency at which we are operating the impedance of the capacitor is much greater than the impedance of the inductor. However, when we change frequency probably things will change. So let's go back to our generator graph right there and remember that we set this up in such a way so as to be able to select the sweep frequency with tuner. So before we select a range of frequencies, let's go back to our schematic and make our inductor a little bit bigger. Let's make it uh, 1 microharries, which is 1000 nanoharries, and then simulate. Things are still the same at 1 megahertz, but now if we go to project options and we define a frequency range between 1 and 12 megahertz in steps of 1, and then click on apply, make sure that replace is selected and make sure that the frequencies appear here then click on OK and now we can open the tuner and we can uh, change the frequency of our signal generator. Unfortunately uh, the simulator doesn't always auto retune the scales so we may have to click as we go up in frequency again onto the simulate icon so that we can see what's going on. You can see here that I've reached resonance so if I go down in frequency as you can see uh, then I've got the current leading the voltage, so we are in a capacitive situation. As I increase the frequency, then I get to a point where I'm at resonance, so the two are in phase with one another. And then as I increase it further, maybe we'll re-simulate to see a better scale. You can see that now the voltage leads the current, which means that the inductor impedance is dominating. The other thing that's interesting to see, let's, let me move the tuner out of the way, I'll just uh, close all the windows and then I'll open only the ones for the graphs capacitor, generator, inductor and resistor and then I can say window, tile vertical and you can see all four graphs in one go. Now you can see that as I change the frequency although the current and voltage relationship for the generator change all the time because they depend on the overall value of the impedance it sees and this value is frequency dependent, the voltage and current relationship for the inductor, capacitor and resistor will stay the same. So now I'm at 12 megahertz. If I go down, you can see of course that things change, but the phase relationship remains unchanged for the resistor, the conductor and the capacitor. It only changes for the generator. Let's re-simulate again to change the scales and as we go further down in frequency we see we are a resonance here but then when we go below resonance then we see that the current starts again leading the voltage and we can re-simulate and see this a bit more clearly. And you can see that the capacitor, inductor and resistor voltage current relationships in terms of phase remain unchanged and only the ones for the generators do change.